Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new Fallout video. So today we have a shiny new trailer for the upcoming Fallout TV series over on Amazon Prime and I've got to say, first look, this looks really, really cool. I'm definitely quite impressed by this trailer. First thing that kind of struck me about it was that uh, compared to the last trailer that we had a couple of months ago, it looks like in between the point where these two were made, they've done quite a bit of post-production work. It looks a lot more polished this time around. So uh, yeah, I'm guessing that first one came out not terribly long, or was made rather, not terribly long after the initial um, sort of uh, end of production, whereas this new one has obviously been made now that a lot more stuff's been done after that, and uh, the finishing and the polishing stages, so that's very, very cool. We're going to have a look through this today, we're going to see what cool details we can pull out, not expecting to find everything, so uh, yeah, if you guys spot anything cool that I've missed, do let me know. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, find some fun stuff because this is definitely cool. So yeah, I suspect I'll be using the word cool quite a lot today because that, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. So shall we jump in? Hello there. I'm here to show you a wonderful place. Walton Goggins there. This is a, a cool little insight, I think, into the character he's playing. As we know, he'll be playing the ghoul. Um, first off, love the suit. It reminds me a little bit of mine, <laughs> but I like it. Um, yeah, this is obviously him pre-war. Um, we know we got the impression rather so far that he was in some way an actor or something, the character he was playing. So it looks like he may have been involved in the promotional stuff for vault -Tec. We can see a whole load more stuff about that in a bit. Um, as hence we've already seen his character in a vault suit. So it looks like, uh, yeah, he was employed in some capacity there prior to the bombs dropping. And uh, this is some of his production work before that has sort of been used to promote the, the series, which is quite cool and an interesting setup. I like that a lot. Green screen or actual vault? Hmm, really cool. Very in the vibe of the 50s and the, the Fallout setting and the whole background, that, um, that transition. It was very, very cool, like a lot. Nice little painting there. This is quite interesting on a number of ways. We've got a cool little look at the inside of the vault, and it's presumably supposed to apply the vault still being built. Um, incidentally, if you haven't noticed already, I'll be cutting in and out sort of whether or not I've got the audio from the trailer on, because copyrights like that, it's particularly iffy around audio. Um, I think we're solid on the fair use front on the um, most of this, but uh, arguing it is um, always a pain in the neck, so you know how that goes. Anyway. Um, there's an interesting thing on the edit here that is kind of a little abrupt, a little sharp, and a little close together which I think has to do with sort of old school editing using physical film uh, and the way a cut in that is quite literally a physical cut in the film and then you fix it back together again as opposed to modern digital editing techniques. So yeah, it's kind of interesting the way they've kind of captured that in this sort of video here, which is kind of fun. Um, lots of little details around the vault. You've got uh, some sort of 50s inspired uh, lawn furniture there, which is quite fun, some succulents and stuff. Um, if we go back a tiny little bit, there we go, we get a little look at them planting and stuff. Don't know whether or not this is supposed to actually be in the vault, or... I mean, I guess we'll see, because some of the footage we saw violence in a vault and the location looked a lot like this, so I'm guessing this is actually inside a vault. Um, as opposed to it being a promotional film that's meant to look like inside of a vault, and it's actually a set, you know, like you know, a soundstage or something. But I think this is actually pretty reminiscent of what we're going to see inside the vault, based on what we saw in the last trailer as well, so that's cool. Vault suits are interesting, they're not bad. Um, on some people they are more snugly fitting than others, which I have kind of mixed feelings about this, because particularly in Fallout 4, one of the things I liked was that the vault suit was always very snugly fitting. It was a particular design to that. Whereas you look at some of the older games, particularly Fallout 3, then you see less tightly fitted vault suits, and that's certainly in line with this. And it also kind of lines up with them being more mass produced, and it's like, okay, you're about that size, so here's a vault suit of about that size and it might not fit perfectly because it's very 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 off the peg <laughs> so uh, yeah I, I, there's an element of that going on in here which i like although it does make the costumes look a little bit less well made it kind of also has its own thing going on which is an interesting thing you can be a hero by purchasing a residence in a vault tech vault today because if the worst should happen tomorrow the world is going to need you to build a better day after 
It's interesting that Walton Goggins is such a, um, a, a good fit for the 50s stuff as well as for the post-war ghoul stuff. He's uh, very much that famous as a character actor, and uh, this is really emphasising that quite well, because you really get that vibe that he can kind of drop into any setting with particular facility, which is cool. Uh, interesting chap, he fits the vibe. And there we go, we've seen this shop before, just outside of the vault. Ooh, stop in here. Hang on, come back. In the previous trailer, we basically saw this shot. You've got the beachfront. Um, did somebody say that was meant to look like Santa Monica Pier or something like that? Don't know. Don't know enough about the that sort of corner of the world. So, and obviously... Um, actually, I think this was filmed somewhere... I, I'm forgetting now. I've got a feeling Morocco is in my head, but I'm not entirely sure. I think they did a lot of this in, in North Africa area to create the kind of deserty uh, California coast kind of vibe. And also the Wasteland vibe, because you know, there's not a lot out there. Same reason Star Wars went to Tunisia. But anyway, so this is all quite cool. I'm obviously meant to hark back to that. And a lot of CGI work, I'm sure, as well. But there is the vault entrance, just over here. Very, very cool. And I think this is supposed to be the one Lucy emerges from, I think. Although, yeah, you can't be 100% certain on that at this point. So, Shady Sands. There we go, very famous uh, location. Public library, interesting. Um, over here we've got, that looks like a vault dweller, that looks like it's probably Lucy. And judging by the silhouette, the look and stuff here, I think that'll be Maximus. But it's really hard to say for sure there's a big hole in the ground. We'll actually come back to this shot later on. But yeah, we've got a destroyed out building, that looks pretty cool and convincing and old. The cars are definitely, it's interesting to see the, the look of the vehicles in the Fallout games being transposed into live action. Which have done a really great job of here, really really cool. But there are a kind of few differences with um, between sort of realism and stuff that actually exists in the real world to create a physical prop and uh, the entirely digital creation of a video game. So that's kind of interesting. But um, yeah, it sure works and looks very, very cool. And the destruction back there is an interesting thing because you get a bit of this in Fallout 3, sort of this kind of um, destroyed cityscape. In Fallout 4, you would expect it, but it's a bit less... Less like what we've seen before. Obviously, if you see a lot of the real-world footage of nukes going off and the destruction of cities and stuff like that, there's a particular look to the way buildings get destroyed, and it's kind of this. But the games, particularly 4, doesn't lean into that so much. 3 kind of does a bit more, but 4 doesn't, um, with its shifting colour palette and stuff like that. So this really harks back to uh, the stuff that people will have seen in other mediums. So I think it's kind of, uh, in some ways, a nod towards non-gaming audiences because they'll recognise that as a scene of nuclear destruction, you know, um, in a way that uh, will kind of appeal to that side of things rather than more uh, the player side, which is quite cool, I think. I like that side as well. It's Lucy leaving the vault. We've seen a whole bunch of this before. Vault 33. One thing, there's a couple of things here. Firstly, we've got a water bottle here, which I suppose is supposed to be purified water. You'd think it probably is. I do like the blue hair bubble that matches the vault suit. That's a thing I never noticed. Random little detail. The uh, set design looks fantastic. But we kind of knew that anyway. There's one random thing that I noticed. There's a, a bedroll blanket thing on here. Fair enough, it makes sense to have a blanket out there. Keep it warm when you're out and about. And she's not exactly got a coat, has she? So, yeah, you know, she might actually be making use of that. Except that we don't see any indication of that in any of this footage. I'm curious to see whether or not she does get that pulled off and actually wrap it around herself. Because in a lot of times when you see a blanket strapped onto a backpack in any kind of medium, you never see it taken off there. That's what I was getting at. It'd be cool to see that. The mission of the vaults should be important to everyone. The mission of the vaults should be important to everyone. Now, I want to know what she thinks the mission of the vaults is. Because um, we know vault Tech is um, selective, shall we say, in what they tell their dwellers in terms of their reason for being there, what their situation is going to be like in the vault, and so on and so forth. They basically tell them that it's all about rebuilding the world afterwards, circa Vault 76, incidentally. But, uh, and that does actually seem to be what Lucy's implying in this, However, the reality is obviously vastly different in this setting. And yeah, that, that is the question. We see this guy down here who's been knocked out, killed, whatever. Um, it's interesting. It was mentioned in the last trailer. This person was definitely visible in the last trailer. And we've got somebody else here from inside the vault who is not really convinced that Lucy's decision is a great idea, leaving the vault here. Got to wonder what happened there. Is somebody dead? Was there uh, the combat battle scenes we saw in the vault in the previous trailer? Was that what led to this? Or is this somebody who's tried to stop her leaving and has um, lost the discussion? <laughs> Interesting to find out. 
That looks very cool though. There's Lucy just outside. I've seen I'll all of this before. This and restart civilization. Stop up there. That's very cool. Um, Fallout staples and archetypes being uh, brought into uh, physical forms called cool. Stimpaks in physical form. Now, I've seen plenty of people online who've made Stimpaks, um, sort of cosplayers and stuff like that, who have made their own Stimpaks. So it's interesting on two levels that. Firstly, that um, seeing how the production company has gone for it. And secondly, just how similar it is to a lot of cosplay stuff. I mean, obviously, they're trying to recreate the same thing, but. It's cool to kind of see how close cosplayers have got uh, compared to how professionals with bigger budgets can do, you know? <laughs> also, there's a bubble head, which is very cool. I've got one over here, which I don't know if I can reach. There we go. I bet this is basically just a scuffed up version of uh, something like that. Let's put him back there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is just a scuffed up version of something that Bethesda sell uh, in their shop and they've just gone, yep, I'll have one of them and just... To, my, to be fair, it's surprisingly clean, but it is inside a nice cabinet, so it looks like it's been protected, which is quite cool. Can you tell me what's happened in the last 200 years? Can you tell me what's happened in the last 200 years? Yeah, sure, Han. I'm uh, clearly that old and can just express all of this in a short conversation. Yeah, quite. Lucy's outfit looks really cool, though. Interesting, she's got some kind of firearm there, which I think we're going to be seeing more of in a bit. Little details, like uh, elbow pads and stuff. I think it may be the case that by this point she's picked up a few extra bits and pieces out there, but I don't know. And this set, this location, uh, kind of shop, which I've got a theory as to where it might be, kind of, uh, is really, really cool. Looks very, very awesome in his details. This lady is a very, very wasteland dweller, and uh, the performance based on what we're seeing here is looking very, very cool. Um, She's got a fantastic laugh. The response to Lucy as a vault dweller is just like, holy shit, in a you are going to get torn apart kind of a way, and it's really, really fun. Holy shit, you're an actual vault dweller. I am. <laughs> that I thought all you dipshits were dead. Uh, that's, that's just funny. Yeah, I love that response. And also, Lucy's like, bright eyed, and yeah, everything's fine. Isn't it great? I'm a vault dweller. I'm. All happy little slurry, and <laughs> that ain't gonna last. Not up there. It's kind of fun. The contrast is really nicely done there. It's really introducing the, the contrast between the vaults and the vault dwellers and the world above that uh, is established in the game um, for both you know, general gaming viewers and for people who are not coming in from experience of the franchise. So that's really cool. So, back to not having any sound here. The reason for that being, the ink spots, I don't want to set the world on fire, is being played at this point. And on the last one, they kind of echoed that song a little bit, but didn't actually play it. To see that song actually in this trailer, presumably they've got the rights in the meantime, uh, is really, really cool, because as somebody who started playing Fallout through Fallout 3, that's um, especially iconic, that tune to me. Just go and watch the old uh, launch trailers and announcement trailers for Fallout 3 and or just the beginning of the game if you haven't um, experienced that for yourself and you'll see exactly why. Uh, yeah, it's um, very, very iconic, so I'm glad to actually see that in here. And it, uh, that makes me very, very happy. Lucy wandering through some destroyed uh, vehicles here. I don't think we're going to see much more here. There we go. Uh, this is actually not that different to the world as is, except for the style of the vehicles. That uh, must have been an interesting set for the set designers to put together. In the woods, dragging a load of vehicles in, lining them up, just shoveling dirt and stuff and leaves all over them to create this kind of abandoned car in the woods that stuff's growing around. You do see shots like this occasionally in the world today, so it's really quite cool, but uh, with that Fallout twist on it. So if we go back to this scene here, we've got Lucy, who's just about to leave the vault. He's saying, oh, it, it's big out there, it's not like in the vault. Sounds like he might have been out there before, or maybe he's just talking out of his backside. Um, who knows? But yeah, obviously that's just for Lucy's departure, so that's going to be interesting. Um, the fact they're just standing there chatting and he's trying to talk her out of it makes implies that he at least thinks there's some kind of prospect for her to remain in the vault and she doesn't have to leave. So... You know, compared to some of the games that, you know, the character has absolutely got to leave the vault. It's uh, interesting to see the it's a, a different change in vibe. So anyway, a nice, um, nice <laughs> look at a, a panoramic there. Lucy in the wasteland. 
What the hell is she carrying there? She doesn't seem like the sort to pick up a severed head and carry it around, but that looks awfully like a severed head to me. Yep, that looks like a severed head she's carrying. Just by the back of its uh, <laughs> hair. Um, that could be interesting. Or it could be something completely unrelated that just looks like a, the silhouette of a severed head. But um, this is the Fallout universe. It's brutal. It's messy. It's probably a severed head. Oh, one shot too far there. But... I'm interested to see what this is. We've got a flooded area just down near Hollywood Boulevard, because that's what that sign shows there. Let's go back a little bit and see if I can't get a slightly better shot there. There we go. That's better timing on the pausing, isn't it? Like one of the cool destroyed vehicles. It's all looking quite flooded there. That's something you don't see a lot of in Fallout games, generally, where areas are flooded as a result of lack of flood defences and or lack of human intervention, really. Which is uh, interesting. Uh, obviously, Horizon Zero Dawn, well, Horizon Forbidden West in this case, because Los Angeles kind of touches on that a little bit. And looking forward to buying that scene. But yeah, definitely uh, really quite an interesting scenario. We're going to see in a second about how early this must be in the series, but uh, yeah, interesting to see what's going on there. Is it just a cool backdrop for the next scene we're going to see? Or is there something going on here? One point that is weird is the colour of the water is very, very turquoise. And there's some blue in the sky and there's green in, in, in the trees. But I feel like there, there's some interesting colour grading effect going on here that is a tad on the unrealistic side. Which is not necessarily a problem. Oh dear, Lucy, you're up the river with no means of propulsion. That is a really cool looking firearm though. Somewhere between, a, well, I think it's a revolver sawn off shotgun kind of deal. It's very, very unique and cool, but you, you'll see why I think that in a bit. We're also going to have a look at Lucy's Pip-Boy in a bit, which is quite cool. She's obviously had an encounter of some kind at this point. And Maximus doesn't seem to be present, which is interesting because we had a previous shot where she's alone with Maximus. And in this situation, she's alone with the ghoul. Uh, presumably those two characters moving in and out of her orbit over a period of time, I guess. Very, very cool. He looks so very... He looks like a ghoul. It, they've done a great job on this. Perfect? No, but it does look good. Some of the previous shots of him did not flatter the makeup and the prosthetics as well as they could have done, whereas this really does make it look better. There's a couple of iffy areas. Maybe the eyes are a bit weird. Um, there is a historical thing with prosthetics and stuff like that getting too close to actors' eyes and causing problems, not just that they can't see, but also that... Um, they can start to irritate around eyes. So, example that's springing to mind is John Reese davis in Lord of the Rings playing Gimli. His prosthetics cause havoc around his eyes. But I do think the other thing is they're trying not to make it too heavy so that um, the actor's expressions can come through. Um, as I mentioned before, Walter Goggins is quite well known as the character actor. So the fact that they're trying to make his eyes visible and his mouth as well means he can convey his expressions more easily and enhance his performance more by not being buried under makeup so i get that as long as it's moving and you're not micro analyzing it like we're doing here <laughs> then uh, that should be absolutely fine i think but i think it looks pretty darn good a little chunk of his ear missing there which is interesting so we'll go back a couple of shots if we can not much going on there except uh, a just a headshot on the background so that could be any kind of context, just dropped in to provide a, a through thread for the for the trailer. So we've got uh, vault -Tec, um some kind of vault -Tec, um chemical, or I don't want to say medicine, so let's just go with chem. There's an interesting reference to that in a minute. So yeah, again, not a lot new to see here. We get a little hint around how very metal her Pip-Boy looks. We'll see it in more detail in a bit as well. A bit detailing on the, the neck there. Um, one cool thing that you do see throughout this is the, the deterioration in Lucy's appearance and vault suit. Starts off with this pristine, clean, spotless vault suit. Now the zips come down a little bit. There's dirt on it. There's build and grime that's building up in the textures and stuff. 
She's looking, her hair's starting to come down a little bit and she's looking like she's been through a bit through the walls. She doesn't appear to have the shoulder injury she had earlier, so maybe that part's coming later. Uh, you start to see little bits of, as I say, deterioration in her appearance. She's talking about everybody she's met trying to kill her. This is interesting. It looks like a medical, vault tech medical facility of some kind. Uh, this looks like a school. But it's interesting that they would transition from a school straight to the next thing. I mean, it could be a nurse's office in a school, I suppose. Or they might be unrelated shots, but that is... Abandoned school is just about as creepy as abandoned buildings going to get, I think. Also, little cool details here. Um, you see, particularly in Fallout 76, we can have little coin-operated rides that you see around the arcades and stuff for young kids, like little rocking rockets and things. Looks like some of that might be going on in the background there. Elementary school or something to that effect. So, there we go, here we go. Nurse's office. Um, a lot of this looks not really vault tech, though possibly at the back. We'll have to see if we can get a bit more of a detailed look. 50s-style fridge there. Very iconic. And a gurney and a whole load of medical stuff. A load of drugs just on the side, as you do. Loads of stuff. And we've got a... Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure if this is a, actually a nurse's office in a school because of the previous shot, or if this is in a hospital somewhere, because the context of this makes it seem like it probably is in a hospital. Well, again, uh, background music, so I can't really show you that, but he's just claiming he's going to harvest her organs. Because, yeah. Um... Uh, I hope it goes by, without saying by this point. Link down below for the full trailer. Go watch it. <laughs> Lucy's looking really like she's having a rough time here. Mr. Handy, however, looks fantastic. Which they should do, because there's a big-ass life-size one in Bethesda's offices in Maryland. So if they actually want to go and look at that, they've got plenty of references that they can then beat up. So the production team will have had access to good material in order to base a Mr. Handy on, but it's really cool to see that in a live production form. And let's look at his movement and stuff, as well as, you know, there's a bit of a joke here, which I slightly apologise for spoiling. The movement's good. <laughs> Timing on that is much better with sound, I'm sorry, I can't provide that for you, but it's great. It's very Fallout sense of humour, but a familiar sense of humour too, um, beyond just Fallout, so it's quite cool in that regard. Lucy just flopping down. This we've seen before. This is an odd shot. It looks like Lucy being involved in promotional material for the vault, or that doesn't add up because she's way too young, what with it being 200 plus years after the bombs drop, and she is quite obviously not 200 years old. And also this vault doesn't appear to be the kind of vault that uh, has cryo stuff going on, not least of all exhibited by the fact that this lady is pregnant. So, yeah. Well, she's some kind of engineering type. I wonder if she's involved in engineering, if that'll um, work into um, her character and the things she gets up to outside the vault. She's peeled the top half of her vault suit down now. Interestingly, this is probably early on, although it could be a flashback in her memory. Because there's also going to be her doing the same thing as this later on. So it's kind of establishing early on her tendency to just kind of get this thing out of the way so she can get the job done. Um, and it's going to hark back to that. It's an interesting link between her life in the vault and her life outside, which we'll see in a minute. Also, first proper look at new Pip-Boy. It's very metallic, very cool. The display is very, very, very much in keeping with the video game Pip-Boy. On the off chance that anybody watching this is not a fan of the games, it's your wrist-mounted computer that controls your inventory and stuff like that. It explains why there's a UI in the game, because you've got a computer on your arm. But yeah, it's very, very cool. It's very much a staple. Um, this looks like a hybrid of the one from Fallout 3, which was much more metallic in its look, um, and much slimmer and more streamlined, a smaller wrist-mounted thing. Whereas the one in Fallout 4 is a much bigger, more plasticky, bulky, weighty thing. So as you turned your arm, the weight would pull your arm over kind of vibe because there was so much stuff on the top of your arm. So this looks like it's much more streamlined and slick, and you kind of see the other side of it um, on the lady in the background here. You see the, the the back of the wrist, which is cool. You get a good look at it there. We'll see it again in a minute as well. But this is a really good look at the display, which is very much straight out of the game. But yeah, um, the positioning of the controls is very Fallout 4, but the shape and the colour and the style is very Fallout 3, so it's an interesting hybrid of the two. Very cool. Let's jump back and have a look at that little... Yeah, you see the back of it there, and a little bit more of it here. Uh, maybe it's a little bit more bulky here than it looked 
I wonder whether or not this is two different shots, and actually she's got two different versions of the Pip-Boy, one that's larger for interacting with, and one that's smaller so that the character can wander around, and it doesn't encumber the actress so much. Maybe. Possible. Who knows? Uh, or it could just be camera angles and stuff. But it does look chunkier here, uh, but still less chunky than the Fallout 4 one, so there's that. But yeah, there's very promotional material vibes about this. And then there's her departing the vault and her relationships. We get some cool look at the Brotherhood of Steel here. Now that one is a shot we've seen before. But if we go back a little bit... Obviously a shot of Maximus here in his... Um, he's a, a squire, isn't he? So that's his presumably squire garb. To buckles and straps and stuff. And a bit of power armour. T60, the best kind. In the corner with appropriate decals on it, which is also very cool. American flag's weird. I would have expected a Brotherhood of Steel one. Although we do know the Brotherhood emerged from the US Army. That was uh, where it was founded. This was 200 years ago. Um, this looks to be an old army base the Brotherhood have taken over and used as a base. We have seen shots of this in the background before. It's quite obviously a training place. Uh, different tongue though. Usually they get, we see them in underground bunkers or more heavily fortified locations. This is not the most secure space in the world. Um, it's also out in the butt end of nowhere from the look of the backdrop there in the desert all around it, so... Um, there's nothing like isolation for security, I suppose, in a sense. But yeah, very, very cool nonetheless. Lots of little bits of details. Cool, got somebody in a... Clearly a very, very senior individual here in an interesting sort of double-breasted military-esque jacket here. I don't know if this is supposed to echo Maxon's battle coat, but not. Um, that's definitely got a little bit of that about it from Fallout 4. Ooh, good look at um, power armor there, T60. It's weirdly kind of folded up onto his face, which is a bit weird, unless it's maybe closing. But normally the power armor opens from the back. Um, we see a really cool bit of the, the faceplate moving, which is a new feature and I actually really like and think it's quite cool. Although there's maybe potential issues with it. But yeah, um, they've basically created the uh, assault rifle straight out of Fallout 4. Which, I've mentioned this in other videos and occasions before. If you've got, can I... Well, I don't know if you guys can see that back there. If I jump back, that thing there where the... Um, that's the T60 power on my head. That is the Fallout 4 art book. And it does talk about why things, a lot of things are designed the way they are. In the case of this assault rifle, it's designed the way it is because it's meant to look proportionately appropriate to a power-armoured figure. You look at the hands, they are doing here exactly what the game does, which is these are not supposed to be the hands of the actual person, they are mechanical hands on an exoskeleton, well, endoskeleton kind of, both. Bit of both, weirdly both. Uh, a frame, anyway. So the weapon is designed to be used by these massive hydraulic hands, not by an ordinary person's bare hands. So that's why it's weird and huge. Um, you've also got a little bit of echo of World War One around the cooling jacket there and stuff like that. Very, very cool. We've got an interesting thing here. Um, Maximus is not a born Brotherhood member. He came in from outside and on a bit of a revenge kick, apparently. So it seems like he's probably going to be a bit of a tool <laughs> in some ways. We'll see what kind of person he is and what his character develops is like. But uh, I think he's going to be a faintly irritating individual. He's just got that vibes to me. We'll see. I'm sure there's good... Oh, that's not good. <laughs> there's um, a post-production error here. You can see their little hatching, which you wouldn't do unless you were doing the silly thing of pausing it every few seconds like me. But that's... Um, when you use image manipulation software, when there's nothing in the background, you remove the background and drop something in, this is where what you see when there is no background. It's still visible here because fading in. That's the uh, interesting and amusing. I mean, it's just the transition between the scenes. He looks a lot older here than he does in other shots, which is interesting. Yeah, this is really, really cool. Yeah, I really like this. Um, this is the faceplate of T60 armor, which appears to have Maximus in it, which is interesting because he's not a full Brotherhood member, at least as far as we know. He's just a squire, so Brotherhood's supposed to have limited supplies of power armor, relatively speaking, because... It's not an every soldier had one kind of thing. It was highly specialised top tier equipment. So um, the Brotherhood limit access to it just as much as, um, it, or in theory they would, as uh, the army would. It would be, you know, focused and specialised teams because, you know, not everybody can have one. There isn't enough. Uh, in this case, 
it's a bit odd that we'd see somebody like him in it because he's that low ranked. You would normally save it for somebody else, uh, a knight, for example. In this case, however, it's we do know he has um he's squiring for another knight. So and this is looking damaged quite severely. We saw in the previous trailer that there is um, a Yao Guai attack on the knight who is training Max up here. Um, he gets like pounced on by a Yao Guai, a giant angry bear, mutated bear. And um, that looks like the damage is consistent with that. So I'm guessing it's actually his power armor that has been, um, should we say, reclaimed by Maximus here? I'm guessing he's probably not meant to be in it. But the opening and closing of the faceplate there is something that's not in the games at all and is very, very cool in a lot of ways. It makes a lot of sense. You can see the face of the person in there. It makes communication more easy. Um, as a thing for conveying a performance, like we talked before with the ghoul's makeup and stuff, not hiding too much of the face allows more of the performance to come through. From a military standpoint, there's not a lot of point in it opening because the way Fallout deals with it is there is a, a microphone and a speaker set up, so it just comes through and you don't need to open it up in order to speak to somebody. But this allows you to see the actor's face, which is makes a lot of sense. The one thing that is iffy with this, as um, from a mechanical standpoint, is obviously you've got the hose and the, the breathing apparatus here. This thing closes and does look like it clamps down fairly hard, but there's no kind of plasticky rubber seal on this, which there would need to be in order to create an airtight seal, some kind of seal with a give to it. And it doesn't seem like there is one. It looks like it's just two pieces of metal that kind of sit on top of each other which would probably not be tight enough to make it um, hazard proof, you know, which the power armor is supposed to be. But nitpicking, and um, certainly not going to spoil my experience with it in any way, but and I really do think it's quite cool that it opens up. But yeah, there's a, a nitpicky little detail for you. How cool is that? Going to come after you. Also, I love T60 power armor. I might love the ghoul's outfit a little bit more. I know, it's um, heresy to me, for me to say that, but uh, it is very cool. And he's got a um, repeating weapon of some kind on his back from the look of that. Unless it's um, some kind of machete with a buck knuckle bow on it, but I don't think that's the case. I think this is probably a repeater of some kind. There you go, Slocum's Joe over there, the ruins of one. And a dog! Dog mate! We did see a dog in... Um, some previous shots in the previous trailer, so that's quite cool. However, the dogs with the ghoul, which we didn't get that kind of context before, kind of makes sense. Doesn't really make a lot of sense for Lucy unless Lucy finds the dog outside the vault and it decides to follow her, like in the games, to be fair. Um, and yeah, the Brotherhood orientated Max having a dog with him at all times seems unlikely as well. Doesn't really fit the scenario, so the ghoul is a more logical choice as a, a wanderer of the wasteland to have a, a dog with him. But uh, I wonder if this will be a dog meat and called dog meat. Because, you know, there's multiple iterations of the dog meat character. The one in Fallout 4 is not the same as in Fallout 3 and stuff. And obviously this is the other side of the country. So hmm, who knows? It'll be interesting to see how they tackle that. But uh, cool to see the dog in there. To come after you. Let's pull that back just a little bit. See that shot a tiny bit more. Yeah, same spot. You're walking down the road. See um, a lack of human intervention resulting in the desert reclaiming the road, as well as you know destruction from the bombs that probably drop somewhere off in that way, because that's a city. Very cool. Some amazing set design. Um, although I suspect most of this is added in post. After you. Still, good work. And here we have the ghoul looking awesome. We've seen these shots before. And uh, how beaten up and like is old and like is foiled in apart his clothes are. It looks like he's been living in that jacket for a hundred plus years. Um, I'm saying 100 plus specifically because I know it's about 200-ish years, 210-ish, since the bombs dropped. Um, but we do see hints that he was probably wearing some kind of vault suit at that point in time. And clearly he's not here. So he's probably not been wearing that the whole time. Ain't much stage clean up here, Vaulty. So there we get a little look at um, the gun that the ghoul is carrying on his hip which looks way more shotgun than it does uh, revolver, or at least in terms of the, the damage output. Um, slug, possibly? I don't know. Well, it's clearly done a number on whoever this person is. He looks uh, somewhat raidery, maybe. This is the lady we saw earlier. This is the guy she talks to at night. He tells her to go back to the vault. She won't survive. And they're all in this town that we've seen bits before. 
And uh, it looks like, for some reason, they are agreed on using this place to set up an ambush and, and using the ghoul as bait. Because they do seem to be, you know, everybody's there and all involved and stuff, so... Ain't much stage cleanup. Uh, this is obviously early on, though, because we go jumping back to what we saw before. There's a lot of dirt and dust on here on um, Lucy's vault suit, but it's generally speaking more intact. Here's so, vaulty. boom, that's cool. Uh, this is fun. So is that Ma Junes or Ma Junes? I'm guessing Ma Junes, as in Mother June. Uh, she looks like whatever happened here put her down, and he's gone down as well. They don't look dead particularly. We'll see whether or not they move in a second. There we get a decent look at the firearm that Lucy is carrying, and I use that term loosely. Um, it's weird. It doesn't look like anything we've ever seen in Fallout. That makes me hesitate, but it's also supposed to be, I think, Vault Tech Engineered, so I think it is supposed to look weird. And you'll see why, because what it does in just a second, and it, it's quite a laugh, this scene. Really good look at uh, the full shot of the ghoul's outfit there, and he really looks like a ghoul here. Really nicely done. Well, now that is a very small drop in a very, very large bucket of drugs. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Although he refers to it as a small drop in a large bucket of drugs. Why he didn't say chems, I'm a little bit like... I suspect that's leaning towards um, non-Fallout players as part of the audience there, so they, they get what's going on there, implying that he's um, rather fueled himself up with a lot of uh, stuff that he perhaps should not have done so with. Um, but yeah, I think that's more geared... The use of the word drugs rather than chems, I suspect, is geared towards the, the non-game-playing audience so that they get the context. Um, but obviously it implies that the weird gun she's carrying is a tranquilizer. Bold choice, Cotton. <laughs> Definitely bold. Um, it bent, which is interesting. And also kind of realistic in some ways. Uh, interesting choice. We get a little hint as to what his accent's like as well. Which is uh, a bit southern, but not entirely. For a minute there, that looks like an, oh, the remains of a vault suit that he might have been wearing. Could he still be wearing the remains of his old vault suit underneath all this? Seems unlikely 200 years later, but you never know. They might do it for Easter egg hints and throwbacks. Uh, toilet seats. Why toilet seats? You steal, we shoot. Laser rifle symbol. Very cool. Lots of little bits of detail. Uh, not sure what those are. Ammo boxes of some kind. That bag looks a little too clean. He's lost his leg. Oh, that, that, that's not very nice. Uh, he's not having a good day. Oh, is he dead or is he just... Uh, passed out? Because there's not very much blood for a guy who's just uh, clearly had his foot shot off. Um, we're going to see some more violence in just a moment. Which is not surprising in this universe, but, um, yeah. Let's jump that back a little bit, that'll do. She's down. He's She's moving. I don't know if he's moving while she's shooting at him. Uh, that's his jacket flapping up. It looks almost like a buttstock of something there, but it's not. Loads of weird bits of detail and scrap and stuff in the background, which is very Diamond City. Um, let's go back again a second. I'll see if he's moving. He is moving. I just saw his head move. Don't know if it's meant to, but he is moving. And yeah, so cool. And that is not an ordinary shotgun shell, whatever it is. No, it looks like it's got a glass tip to it, like it delivers something other than uh, normal ammunition. Incendiary, possibly? I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, the way he's holding his arms up, he's got to be conscious, otherwise they'd have hit the ground already. But uh, how he's conscious under those circumstances, I don't really know. So interesting um, vocal choice there. Quite cool. I think we can pick a few things up. I'm not sure what this building's supposed to be. Definitely harks back to old pre-war buildings with lots of scientific stuff going on that uh, get explored in a post-war context to find out what the hell's going on. You know, the Brotherhood like diving into buildings like this to pull technology out so that it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. So there's that. Uh, there's people down here. Interesting. I'm guessing this looks like a point of conflict between the incoming Brotherhood and whoever's down here. But is that a ro Are those turrets? They could be turrets. Hmm. Incoming vertebrates from the sunset or rise. Sunset. <laughs> Should be, anyway. 
There's Lucy looking like she's having a very unfortunate encounter with the previous uh, Mr. Handy that was talking about wanting to harvest her organs. Um, I'm going to go ahead and assume he, the, Mr. Handy's not successful. There is Carl McLaughlin playing the overseer of the vault that Lucy is from. A lot of police stand by stuff in there. Obviously, everything's got the hell in a handcart in his vault at this point. And uh, I'm guessing this is... She could be coming back to the vault she's from uh, later on, and then everything's gone horribly wrong, and maybe it wasn't quite as bad at the start. But we did see that body on the floor when she was leaving, so it implies she might have been leaving a less than stellar situation. I want to know who this is supposed to be. Because we've got some very basic looking gear, except for that laser pistol, which is perfectly right out of the game, by the way. That is very well done, looks exactly spot on. Even more, the proportions are better than they are in the game as well, which is also cool. Yeah, uh, we've got somebody packing uh, a very AK looking weapon, which probably means Chinese assault rifle. Some very rustic wasteland sort of improvised armor vibes here, which would make me think Raider. And whatever's going on with this lady's face here makes me think Raiders. The beret and the helmet are a bit more, and the armor here is a bit more formal military though. And we're going to see something else in a minute that leans towards that. This looks a lot more organised, but the armor's a bit patchwork, which could just be a post-apocalyptic thing. And here we go. Now this is very interesting. Brotherhood of Steel, power armor, vertebrates. Background of this structure here that we saw before that we were talking about the Brotherhood coming to attack and take um, technology out off, probably because that's their thing. These guys, not sure who they are or what's going on, but. Um, I think we can infer a very great deal from this, which is a New California Republic flag, NCR. Confirmed, I think we can now say. We didn't know for sure before what was going on with that, because this series is set smack in NCR territory. And there's an NCR flag, so we are seeing active conflict between the New California Republic and the Brotherhood of Steel, which is very consistent with the setting as established already prior to the series, so that's very, very cool. Those look like beer kegs. I don't think they are, but they look a bit like it. Some An observatory of some kind, and some kind of ship centre, it says in the background there. Let's see if we can't get a bit more detail. Hmm... Um, there's a C in there somewhere, I think. Uh, Griffith Observatory, something ship center. Difficult to say. Um, but this is Griffith Observatory, which, um, I don't know. That's ringing a bell for me. I'm going to Google this. One moment. Okay, so I'm going to have to have a look at that in more detail on my own time, because there's obviously a lot to figure out here. But this is Griffith Observatory. Um, obviously twisted around and modified a bit for Fallout, but it's just outside of LA. It's a real place. Um... And, yeah, it's an observatory. And surprisingly, given the Brotherhood's proclivity for taking over technology, the history in the Fallout universe of observatories not being everything they seem, I've got a feeling this was not everything it seemed in a Star Trek movie as well, which is probably why I recognise the name. Um, plus, you know, being a significant structure like this explains why there'd be conflict between the NCR and the Brotherhood in this location, potentially. Looks very interesting, very consistent with the game and the the uh, faction dynamics that are going on in the game world and looks like it'll be a darn good scene as well oh there we go here's um in the background we've got uh the ghoul talking about conflict and what's going on and people pulling the strings and stuff in the background we've got a radiation king tv i've never seen one with an offset screen like that before uh because obviously the center's about here but that's Fine. Also, we get to see a little bit of Walton Goggins in his pre ghoulified actor role <laughs> before he became the, the man he was 200 years later. Oh, and he, he's taking a trip down memory lane here. He's watching his own old footage in what looks to be the ruins of a Super Duper Mart. Or at least it looks like that from the shelving at the background. This is very Fallout, the shelving, by the way. I think we saw footage of probably this location, if not the, you know, the exterior of it, maybe, because we saw some super duper art, some photographs of the, the set being set up ages ago, back before Christmas. So that's quite cool. And he's got his hat off, which we don't think we've seen him with his hat off before. It's an interesting look at the character, showing a, a less badass side of him and a bit more vulnerable, which is, yeah, I mean, you'd be carrying around some stuff after 200 years in the wasteland, I imagine. 
There we go. We've seen little hints of where the character was prior to the bombs dropping. So we've got little bits of the bombs dropping in the background there. We've got to see him running for cover with, I'm guessing, his daughter. There seems to be a yeah, man lost his family and has never been the same since vibe, which is entirely understandable. So yeah, we see a little bit there, a very, very brief shot of uh, a bomb dropping. Uh, just kind of a different angle of the shot. There's a fight between a power armored uh, Brotherhood knight, possibly Maximus, but probably the his um, the knight he's squiring for, uh, and Yao Guai. So let's jump back to a tiny little bit if I can. There you go, big bear, dude in power armor. It's not very clear because it's a very very quick shot. See little bits of detail on the the skin where it's all blistered up and nasty because Yao Guai tend to look almost like undead bears. So there's that. We're back to the town we saw earlier where Lucy shot the ghoul and where there's definitely some conflict. Interesting to see the, there's going to be more conflict involving the main characters, like the ghoul versus Lucy and co, because they're obviously not on the same side at that moment in time if she's shooting him. So, who knows? But we're also seeing the Brotherhood diving in and we're about to see the ghoul taking a shot at a power-armoured fella, which could be Maximus, it could be something else. So, difficult to say what the context there is going to be. See, see, bullet pinging off power armor because, of course, that's what power armor is for. There we go. There's the ghoul. This is definitely the same um, settlement location we saw earlier. And a very angry Brotherhood member going straight for the ghoul who's unloading on him. So we'll have to see how that goes. <laughs> We've got the creature we saw last time here leaping out. He's got lots of fingers in his mouth and it's Gross. And presumably trying to take a trunk out of a power armored individual. Now, who might be in the power armor at this point in time? It's difficult to say. We Lucy's look like she's seen better days. There's the dog, so I'm guessing that's probably Maximus in the power armor at this point. There is, I'm assuming this has got to be the, the spin on dog meat for this, hasn't it? And there's Lucy's shoulder injury back, so I'm guessing midway through the series ish at this point. And there's a Brotherhood dude who looks like he's having. A very bad time. <laughs> With a really girly scream there. Um, yeah, looks like a squire possibly leading towards a scribe, maybe. Because he doesn't seem like he's exactly the badass type. That's an interesting look. Bunch of vault dwellers looking um, at something. And there's a W2EF expression on this chap's face. What is happening here? Yeah, we know there's something to do with um, vault and interaction between a number of vaults in the story and uh, a lot of bad stuff going down there, because of course there is, it's vault -Tec. This guy is ejecting himself in the back of his neck with something, which is creepy as hell as well. Lots of interesting little details and straps and stuff that are very reminiscent of early 20th century medical experimentation and stuff that is creepy as hell. Uh, certainly gets that makes your skin crawl vibe horrible medical stuff is especially creepy in my opinion and many others as well so uh yeah definitely interesting vibes there we have seen this guy before i don't know if it's the same guy who lost a foot though uh, and whether or not he's trying to mutate i wouldn't be terribly surprised to see him injecting himself with fev there and it ends up becoming uh, some kind of mutant as a result it seems like the sort of thing is this the guy this looks like it's the same guy before who uh, uh, was telling Lucy to go back into the vault and who got his ankle shot off by presumably by the ghoul um, so yeah I don't know maybe he survived and has decided to engage in some kind of experimentation to try and grow it back but that's creepy there's Lucy and the ghoul coming up on the super duper park the backdrop dropped in but this is the set that we saw being built actually I've got a feeling it was built somewhere on the east coast incidentally but yeah I remember seeing shots of this over the fence people took because the road is sort of roughly where we're looking at it in in real the real world there is a road sort of here and of course a little bit off to the left as well so uh yeah this is uh kind of cool to see what that's going to look like actually in the show the finished product and we're going to get a good look at the all taking a bunch of chems at this point and some interesting facial expressions that are worth a look. And you start to see why they dialed back the uh, the makeup a little bit from around his eyes and his mouth. 
Although there's like scarring and stuff going on. But they've done a pretty decent job, I think, there. He's definitely not rotting as much as some ghouls look like they are. He's kind of settled into being uh, an immortal ghoul who hasn't lost his mind and gone feral. So lots of chems. Yeah, just those two shots alone so suggest that he has a, um, a drug issue. And also the fact that she shot him with a tranquilizer and it does nothing because he's so chemmed up anyway that he's practically immune. He's got a tolerance. So, yeah, it's kind of little hints of stuff going on there about the, his character and some self-destructive uh, behaviours, probably based on being 200 years old and having lived through absolute hell for 200 years. And Maximus, the really cool look at his um, under suit, the flight suit that the Brotherhood members wear there. Very, very cool. Perhaps even better than the vault suits, I might go so far as to say. There you go. Get a better look at it. You got the, um, this looks... More heavy duty, more hard wearing than the vault suit does, but the vault suit's intended for wearing in a vault, so there's that. But there's obviously similarities around the wrists and stuff, so the design sensibilities are not a million miles apart. Um, but that's uh, hmm, interesting. It definitely does look a little bit... Uh, my initial reaction here was that it looks like it's a little bit better made, a be better piece of costume design than the vault suit. Um, but I'm coming around a bit to the vault suit now, and now I'm looking at this in a bit more detail. Uh, some of the fabrics are a little bit less impressive, but um, I'm not going to form a too hard a judgment yet. But it does look pretty good. It fits the vibe. It's also got... Uh, he's supposed to be a squire, and then he's kind of, apparently, it seems, commandeered a suit of power armor, so... The fact it's something different might imply that. Maybe they were pushing him towards being a scribe, because that's normally what the red implies, but hmm, who knows. Loving the, the little bit of leather armour on here that, as with leather armour in the games, is completely useless. Will do absolutely nothing to protect you. I mean, a very, very glancing nick might get turned by some of this, but it's not serving any function apart from strapping on whatever weapon she's got there, which looks like it might be more substantial than the um, tranquilizer gun she had before. Another look at the Pip-Boy here, looking very, very metallic. Uh, it looks like it opens up here. Probably does. It's got to open somewhere. But it's usually around the back. But yeah, different design. And again, we've got the hybrid of three and four going on here. Yeah, it's quite cool. So there we go. Back to that shot we saw earlier with um, the uh, the library, was it? Shady Sands Library sign right at the start. We've got a, a big uh, crater. I assume this is supposed to imply that this is where the bomb actually detonated and took out the city from. Although, I feel like that's probably not quite how this would go, but anyway. Some talks around, there was a, a red roach getting squashed, and some discussions around the conflicts between the factions going on here in the background. And there we go, look at the power armor. Again, it's later on, we've got big rent scratches all over it, which makes me think this is probably later on in the series. This is a vault, and a power armored brotherhood member busted into a vault. Which they have done in canon on numerous occasions, so not surprising that they would be doing something here. That lady flashed up um, in the last trailer. I used to think it was probably her. Uh, she's got, uh, obviously, her eye taped up and a patch on there. Looks like she survived because she had a fork stuck in there in the last trailer. That was not going well, and she looks quite happy. Or possibly nuts, I'm not quite sure which. There's something faintly sinister about her. Um, we're going to need more context before we figure that out. This is all Vault Dwellers, so I think Lucy is no longer a part of the in crowd by the time whatever's going on here. And a discussion of the conflict. And a cool backdrop as well, which is a bit of set and expanding out to CGI in the distance. Ooh, that looked like it got messy. Who got splattered there? That's just. It's not Lucy, that's. I think. No, that's that, that weird looking vault dweller who was trying to convince her not to leave in the first place, getting absolutely plastered in blood and guts from the look of it. I mean, it could be jelly, but I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's probably not jelly. <laughs> trying to grab these very quick shots is difficult. There's jelly in there. Turret, dog, ooh. There we go, there's some jelly. Congratulations. Hmm, I'm guessing there was some kind of party going on just about the time everything went horrifically wrong. Congratulations, I mean, we saw the pregnant lady earlier, so maybe she 
just um, delivered. Dog gunned dude in lab coat being shot at by a turret. Possibly the same guy from before. There we see... If we can get this pause, because this is really quick. So we've got Lucy and I think this is Maximilian here making some sort of agreement and handshaking thing, or um, establishing greater friendship, anyway. Um, this must be getting later on. I'm guessing there's been conflict between the two of them. He seems like the sort of guy who would bring about a certain amount of interpersonal conflict. But she's also kind of pulled the top off of a vault suit off and is um, a bit more rough and ready looking by this stage, which is obviously echoing a visual echo of her character development throughout the series, we would think. And we got a flashback to the ghoul's pre-war life in a suit, and presumably with his wife, because um, we saw him holding his daughter there, and um, there's definitely a, a mixed family going on there. We can kind of tell that, and this would imply it. I mean, it could just be a performance on set. Maybe that's a co-star and his character's daughter, but, um, you know, kids around a decent person would generally try and protect a kid when all hell breaks loose so that's a plausible scenario but i'm guessing that's not the way they go for story reasons there you are you little killer so it looks like she got involved in some violence and came out on top and she doesn't look massively happy about it judging by the line back there we've got a previous shoulder injury bandaged up here she's peeled the vault suit down she's covered in viscera um and you'll notice this armor is clearly doing nothing for her. <laughs> but yeah, definitely really symbolizing character development. And the bags under there are bigger than mine. So yeah, definitely some character development. She's traveled down a, a rough road from the look of this. Very, very cool. And there we go. April 11th. So... Awesome new trailer. Spent a lot more time diving into that and went way deeper than I had expected, if I'm honest. There is some really, really cool stuff in here. I'm really excited for it. I think, as I said at the start, in particular, the production value has gone up between the two trailers. Not surprising, they've had more time to work on it. Um, yeah, I'm very excited for this. Just uh, a few short weeks now until the series will be out. We also have seen from some of the... Where did I say it? I think it was on Discord that the series is going to drop the whole series in one go on the 11th. So all of the episodes. They won't be releasing weekly. It will be just a full series drop so you can binge it. Um, I think it's going to be eight episodes. I seem to recall reading that somewhere, though. Don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. But um, yeah, that would put it to about an eight-hour-ish running time, wouldn't it? Um, which is plausible for series one. This looks promising. Obviously, it's a trailer, it's promotional material. Looking promising is what they're going for here. But nonetheless, looks interesting. The interpersonal conflict between the ghoul and his background and everything, and Maximus and the Brotherhood and their background, and Lucy's innocence getting rapidly ground down as uh, she merges out into the hellish wasteland is going to be interesting. Who's clearly trying to cling on to being a good person in a world that really doesn't want to let her. And um, obviously you've got conflict there between the New California Republic, which we're finally getting a look at, and the Brotherhood of Steel as well, which makes a lot of sense. They were definitely butt heads in this area. So yeah, there were questions in previous um, material about the presence of the, the NCR, given the location. And it's good to see they are here and figure in the story in a relatively large way as well. So very, very cool. I hope you guys are as excited for this as I am. I'm very much looking forward to this. I hope you uh, found some interesting bits and tidbits in that. As I said before, if there's anything that you spotted that I didn't, I think it's really cool. Hit me up in the comments, let me know. Uh, long old video, this one. Much longer than I intended it to be. A lot longer than I intended it to be. But um, kudos if you managed to stick through this far. Uh, massively appreciated. If you haven't hit the sub button yet, guess you might as well, but how aren't you? <laughs> Thank you very much, I do appreciate. As always, social media links down below. Links to the trailer again if you want to watch the whole thing yourself. Um, merch stores in the description as well and channel memberships are available on the blue join button if you'd like to support the channel in that way we also live stream and make tons of fallout related content on the the games as well fallout 76 going on at the moment and um, so do join us for that and of course um, if you're into the base building side of things as many fallout players are then um, doing some survival game stuff as well on the channel as well at the moment so if you'd like to take a look at that have a little rummage around loads of gaming stuff on the channel so uh, if you found your way here for the first time do have a wander around there's some cool stuff I do hope you'll enjoy. Bye for now.
Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.